Okay, this is a video on your final. And because of the virus and everything that's going on, um, I'm actually going to help you set up your final problems. These are the actual problems that you will be doing. Um, if you download the document, you will see these as your, as your problems. And what you need to do is follow along with me. I'm not gonna give you the answers, but I'm gonna help you with the setup. Um, your job to follow along. And um, if you've watched the other videos on this vertical motion, quadratics, and parametrics, um, I'm hoping this is something that you can do uh, if, if you helped with the setup. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll write the equations down and, and then you can finish them off. The scenery for a new children's show has a playhouse with, a painted, uh, with painted window panes. A special gloss paint covers the area of the painted windows to make them look like glass. The gloss only covers 315 square inches and the window must be six inches taller than it is wide. How large should the scenery painters make the window? All right, so we have a window. Uh, special gloss paint covers the window to make it look like glass. One area, so the area covers 315 square inches and the window must be six inches taller than it is wide. So there's the picture. And what you want to do is you want to figure out the x value so that you can say the dimensions are whatever the x value is by whatever the other x value is what I would plug it in. So I'm going to take x times x plus 6, length times width, area, that's the area, is the length times the width of the base times the height. And I know my area on this problem is 315. So here's what you need to do. You need to distribute. You need to subtract the 315 over the other side, and you need to solve that remaining quadratic with whatever means that you know how. There will be a quadratic equation set equal to zero. Solve it out and you got it. Number two, James wants to paint watercolor for his living room. He has six feet of framing material to frame the finished painting. What should the dimensions of his canvas be um, for the painting to be of maximum area? Um, honestly, this is kind of a trick question. I usually do this one the day before in class. Um, he has six feet of framing material. The frame goes around the outside, so that would be your framing material. Six feet of it. And he wants to maximize area. And if you're making a, like a square rectangular item, uh, the maximized area is what you would get from a square. Square has the most area for the least perimeter, except for like a circle or unless he was going to make some weird shaped polygon exterior. but. So these are all x, because um, I know it has to be a square, maximized area. And 6 is the perimeter, so x plus x plus x plus x should equal 6 feet of perimeter. It will come out to be a decimal, and your dimensions will be the same number, whatever, whatever that number is when you solve it out. A little bit of a trick question. Uh, the next one, number 3. The third hole of the Westerf Westerfield Municipal Golf Course is a 200-yard par 3. Ed Gallagher chooses a 5-iron. His, sw his swing launches the ball with an initial velocity of 150 feet per second. The ball leaves the tee at an initial angle of 25 degrees. How far will the ball travel before hitting the ground? So we're going to use the vertical motion um, type of equation. So x is equal to my initial velocity, v sub 0, times the, I think it's cosine, yes, cosine of theta t. And then my y value is negative 16t squared plus b sub 0 times the sine of theta t plus my start height. And that is definitely an equation we've been working on. Um, I'm not going to write those down every time. So if you need to write those down right now, make sure you press pause and, and then you do it. So my x value is equal to my initial velocity, which is 150, times the cosine of the launch angle, which is 25t. My y value is negative 16t squared plus my initial velocity, which is 150. Um, by the way, the 16 was the feet per second one. That's 4.9, negative 4.9 if it's uh, meters per second. So remember that's feet per second. Um, times the sine of the theta, sine of the angle again is 25t um, and then plus my start height. Polys and a T, and we're going to count that, stop, that, that T value. Maybe it was like right on the ground of the T. I, I don't need a start height. I can plug in a zero there. 
Okay, how far will the ball travel before it hits the ground? So again, usually with golf, we're worried about left or right travel. I mean, I know there's a distance it travels along that arc, but we're worried about how far horizontally it travels. So here's what you need to do. You need to have y equal to zero, and you need to solve this quadratic. And you can solve that however you want. You can use polysymbol two, you can use your app whatever, and you're gonna find a t value. And your answer to how far horizontally it traveled is what you would get if you took that t value and plugged it into the x equation. Finish that one off and go to town. Number four, uh, Zoe kicked a soccer ball from the ground with an initial velocity of 45 feet per second at an angle of 32 degrees to the horizontal. And we're not bending it like Beckham. We did not put spin on the ball. It's just basically a knuckle ball, even though they travel weird when they're knuckle balls. After 0.6 seconds, how far has the ball traveled horizontally and vertically? Again, governed by the equation, x is equal to my initial velocity, which is 45 feet per second times the cosine of the angle, which is 32 degrees. Um, and then I have a t value here, and my y equation is negative 16t squared um, times 45 times the sine of the angle, which is 32 degrees, and then uh, times the t value. And again, plus we have a zero here, plus the start height, but it says it travels from the ground. How far has the ball traveled horizontally and vertically after 0.6 seconds? I don't know. Take the 0.6 and plug it in for the t. And find your horizontal, your x distance. This should, and I could call this x of t, x with respect to time and y with respect to time. Um, I take my t value and I plug it in. Actually, I plug it in at both of those two places. I can find a horizontal and vertical distance that that ball traveled. Number five, Denise Parker was a member of the US Olympic archery team. Denise shoots an arrow with an initial velocity of 65 meters per second and an angle of 4.5 degrees, uh, horizontal target 70 meters away. Denise holds the bow 1.5 meters above the ground when he shoots the arrow. How far above the ground will the arrow be when it hits the target? Okay, um, let's do our x equation. x is equal to um, 65 meters per second. 65 is our initial velocity um, times the cosine of the angle. And the cosine of the angle is 4.5 times t. And my y equation is going to equal, um, this one is meters per second. And your meters per second gravitational constant is negative one half gt squared. The negative one half gt part of there is negative 4.9 t squared. Uh, plus, I think, yep, it's plus um, 65 times the sine of 4.5 t. And this time we have a start height of 1.5 meters sitting up there like this, so that arrow's off the ground when we started. Okay, this one says, if Denise holds the bow and she shoots, let's draw a little picture. There's my bow, shoots the arrow. Um, and um, if Denise, how far above the ground will the arrow when it hits the target? So the target is how far away? Oh, 70 meters away. So that's 70 meters away. And here's the target, okay? How far above the ground will the arrow be when it hits the target? Well, I don't know. Why don't we plug 70 in here, 70 into that equation, 65 times the cosine of 4.5t. So you'll divide by that, 65 times the cosine of 4.5. 70 divided by 65 cosine of 4.5, um, and we'll find a t value there out of that. And that's how long, that'd be the time it took to travel that, whatever that t value is. Okay, if I want to figure out how high it is, I take that t value that I got there, and I'll plug it in for those t values over there. Not solve a quadratic, just literally just take the t value and plug it in for the t values, um, t values there. Okay. Um, next one, X, Red Sox great, Wade Boggs hit a ball with an initial velocity of 155 feet per second, an angle of 22 degrees above the horizontal. 
The ball flies straight at the 420 foot marker in center field where the wall is 15 feet tall. He strikes the ball with an initial uh, height of two feet. So let's just draw, let's draw an easy picture. So there's, there's the path of the ball like that. And there's this wall out here. I'm just gonna put the wall here at like 15 feet. 15 feet high is the wall. Um, it's going 155 feet per second and it launches at a launch angle of 22 degrees. Looks like that. Okay. Um, oh, and it's two feet off the ground too. Two feet. Looks like that. All right. How high is a ball at the wall in center field and will it be a home run? Hmm. So I want a Y value. I want a Y value of 15 feet. So I'm going to take my Y equation, which is Y with respect to time is equal to, this is feet per second, negative 16 T squared plus 155, uh, and 155 sine is y, so sine of the launch angle, which is 22 degrees, t, uh, plus the start height of 2. Okay, so I have that equation, and I'm going to set it equal to 15. Sine of 22t plus 2. Set it equal to zero, I'll minus the 15, and I get zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 155 sine of 22 t minus 13. You need to solve this quadratic out. You need to figure out a t value uh, for when the height's 15, and there will both be positive, and there's a reason for that. It's 15 feet right here on the way up, 15 feet tall, tall there and it's 15 feet again on the way back down so the number you're going to use for how high it is um, or or how high it is at that wall the, the thing that we'll use we'll use that t value uh, uh, at 15 we'll figure out we'll figure out that height there or we'll figure out that time it takes okay um, and I got two numbers now what you want to do you want to take that bigger number and you're going to plug it into the second equation. And the second equation is the x value. So x equals, um, well, my x value is that, uh, oh, what was it? 155 cosine, yep, 155 times the cosine of 22t. And if you take that value and you plug it in for the t, you'll figure out how far out that ball is when it's 15 feet up. And if it's over 420 feet, if it's over 420 feet, it was a home run. And if it's under 420 feet, it wasn't a home run. Should be able to finish that one up right there. How far will the ball travel in the air if there was no fence? Well, that would be the whole path of the ball. We don't actually know if it was a home run or not yet. Uh, don't let this mislead you, okay? Make sure you do it. Uh, but what we'd wanna do, how far will it travel? We're gonna plug zero in for the Y value, negative 16 T squared plus 155 times the sine of 22 T plus two. We're gonna solve that out for the T. And then we're gonna take that T value once again and we're gonna plug it in for that t value up there. X is equal to 155 times the cosine of 22 times the t value, which is however long it would be in the air. We can take that and we can plug that in for that t right there. Okay, um, next one, Kyle Schwarber. Kyle Schwerber, outfielder for the Chicago Cubs, is 215 feet from home plate after catching a fly ball. The runner tags up on third and heads for home. Bases are 90 feet apart. Kyle releases the ball with an initial velocity of 75 uh, feet per second at an angle of 25 degrees with a horizontal height of 5 feet. Kyle's throw is dire directly in line with plate, so he didn't miss it left or right. Uh, let's see if we can draw a little picture of this. I'm going to use a little bit of room here. So here's my infield. 
Kyle Schwarber is an outfielder. We're going to put him in center field. Does it say that? Catch a fly ball. The runner tags up. It doesn't, I don't think it really matters. So we'll put Kyle Schwarber right here. Okay. And then this I know is 90 feet. That's how far the um, runner has to go. 90 feet. And he's got 215 feet to throw the ball. So that's 215 feet to throw the ball. Uh, he releases at 75 feet per second. 75 feet per second. And 25 degrees initial uh, angle. There's a 25 degrees. And by the way, if you ever watch a, a center fielder throw a ball, he'll throw it and it will bounce and, and get there. So we might have to take that into um, into consideration. Oh, and he releases at a height of five feet high. Um, how far will the ball travel before hitting the ground on the throw? Well, we have our parametrics here. So our X um, with respect to T is equal to, well, our initial velocity, 75, times the cosine of 25 times T. And our y of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 75 times the sine of 25 t plus the start height of 5. And we want to know how far has it gone before it hits the ground. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug 0 in for the y. Solve that out with a parametric, find our time, find our time, find how long that takes until that y value is zero. And then I'm going to take that time component right there and I'm going to plug it in for that t right there. And whatever you get out of that should be, uh, should be your answer. Whatever that quadratic plugged into that one and that's, that's the horizontal distance that ball traveled and then finally hit the ground. Uh, that's what I got. What's the maximum height of the throw? Uh, the height is corresponding with the y component. Negative b over 2a, we'll find it. So negative b value is negative 75 times the sine of 25, all over 2 times the a value, which is negative 16. Now that value right there, that's going to give you the time until it hits the vertex. That time component right there, what I do with that time component is I take it and I plug it back into, what's the maximum height? I plug it back into the y equation. So y equals negative 16 times the time, whatever that number is squared, plus 75 times the sine of 25 times whatever that t value is right there, uh, plus five. And if you take that, T component and you plug it in there, that, that'll be your Y value at that given time. That Y value at that given time will tell you how high up the ball was, uh, the maximum height of that ball. All right, um, let's see if we can finish. The runner on third tags up and it travels at a rate of 31 feet per second. I'm gonna leave that up right there. Travels at a rate of 31 feet per second. Um, so this right here is 31 feet per second. Is he safe out or do we need to go um, to instant replay assuming there's no wind resistance and the ball does not slow down when it hits the ground? Okay, so what I'd really like to do is see how long that takes and then I can maybe figure that out. So. Distance equals rate times time. The distance of 90 feet, he's going at 31 feet per second. And we want to figure out how long it takes time. If I divide by 31 feet, divide by 31 feet, the time in seconds will equal 90 divided by 31. Quit out of that, quit out of that. 90 divided by 31, and I got 2.90 seconds is how long it takes. 2.90 seconds. 
And what we have to do then is we have to figure out, did the ball get there in time? And again, it can travel and it can bounce. We'll assume it doesn't slow down. It probably does a little bit. Um, I wonder which one of these components is my horizontal component to figure out how fast it'll take to get there. Well, that's my x value. So my x at time 2.90 seconds is equal to 75 times the cosine of 25 t. I can find the t value by dividing by the sine. Uh, 75 times the cosine of 25, 25, and 75 divided by the cosine of 25. Um, and I'll find my time it takes, nope, nope, I'll find the, that's not right. Um, I know the time is, I did that completely wrong. I know the time is 2.9, so I'm gonna do x of 2.90 find the x value at a time there. So I have 75 times the cosine of 25 times 2.90. And basically what you can do out of that when you plug that in is you can figure out that x value. That'll tell you how far you went horizontally. So you can see if the ball went the, what was it, 215 feet. Let me look here. Uh, the ball went, did the ball go 215 feet in that time? Now, if it's pretty close, it's probably instant replay. Maybe the golf ball uh, ball was able to go farther than that. He's probably out. If the ball didn't get there, he's probably safe. So you can um, you can figure that out and, uh, and and see what it is. All right. Good luck.